we have uh, Tomas to talk, uh, talk to us about uh, from local dev to production development environment for full stack project. Hello, hello. <laughs> Cheers. So uh, I was going to build a small project with a friend. Uh, it's a transaction platform f for selling and buying uh, houses. Uh, the, uh, so there are some constraints and the requirements. Uh, we need a chat. Uh, we need file upload. Uh, we need a, actually quite a few chats. The platform is a little complicated from the communication perspective. Uh, oh, crap. And this is basically uh, some, some of the requirements, uh, like the main ones that we, we need to integrate. So as you see, the uh, notifications and chat is probably the most important one. So uh, a little context. Uh, there is no much users there. Mm, the traffic is very low. Uh, we rely only on notifications. And the idea is that uh, we need to deliver notification fast and it must be uh, reliable. Ah. Yeah, so basically we cannot lose people, so the reliability is, is the key. Mm. This is the bootstrap project, so we don't have any uh, money to back it up. Uh, and we need to focus basically on, on reliability and on product itself. Uh, that's why I decided to use Nix for building that. Mm. So, of course, right. And this is basically a case study how I use Nix in this specific project with this specific set of requirements. So, no, n nothing really fancy. Uh, here's my contact details if anyone uh, wants to talk after. I will uh, shoot it later as well. So, yeah. I, I'm repeating myself all the time, but reliability is the key. So to achieve that, I thought maybe it would be really, really nice if I have all the environments the exactly the same. Um, it will save me a time to, to test uh, on other environments because I will have as much as, uh, as I can the same. And that was the point that I thought it will be uh, I will achieve, which is kind of true. Uh, the last one, of course, is not uh, the good thing. Uh, it's kind of what happened, and uh, I was kind of okay with it. So, because I produced this, uh, let's say, configuration to have all the environments the same, that was less code, uh, less less uh, different parts, less moving parts. Uh, and it was kind of working uh, for a long time. I will uh, tell more about later. So what are the building blocks of the projects? So that's basically uh, Django, PyTest for integration test. Do we have like a lot of Python users here? Okay, there are a few. Uh, at the beginning I used Vue.js uh, and then switched to React. Uh, I will talk about le this later as well. So the folder structure is like dumb simple, right? Uh, we have fixed pinned packages for, uh, yeah, Nix packages. Uh, I have uh, packages and services, which is obvious, and the dev machine. I have make file, which uh, simplify my, my workflow. Mm. The services is also that simple. Uh, there are basically NixOS modules that I integrate, and that's it. Mm. With packages, uh, we have a little more, because uh, to achieve reliability, I need to install like quite a few more tools, like OpenJagger, uh, with Cassandra as a backend, plus, plus some other stuff like Prometheus. So there is a uh, few more stuff here. Uh, okay. That's how it looks like from the operational perspective. Mm, the gray ones are production ones. Uh, they are deployed to every environment. The red ones are also a uh, production uh, environment. And the yellow ones are only uh, local development environment. So I said I would like to have uh, 
as much as possible the same configuration, which is true, and the yellow parts are basically the difference between the development environment and staging and production. Uh, I have uh, just a feature flag to enable them, and the red ones uh, are basically behind uh, some password. Of course, for local development environment, I put everything into uh, VM. I use QM, QMU, uh, and that's my flow. So coding, deploy, uh, running tests, or manually clicking in the browser. Mm. This is kind of cool, uh, but also it's, it's slow, right? Uh, each time I do uh, deployment, I need to rebuild Nick's uh, derivation for the system and deploy that into the VM, which is quite fast, but is still a few seconds. Uh, the production uh, deployment is very similar. Mm. On the left, you see the machine Nix, which is the description of whole environment, how to build uh, Django service, how to build Prometheus, how to build database, whatever. And then I have uh, two small, uh, let's call it shims, local development or machine description. Machine description probably should be called prod, mm. which configures uh, the machine and enables the global flag to enable or disable the local development tools. And for each deployment, I have uh, I have different tool. So for production, I use Nix Ops, uh, and for local development, I switch to uh, my own tool, which I will talk later in the lightning talk, uh, and probably will will transit on the other tool as well. So right now, uh, it's two tools. Mm. So if I want to work locally, I just do uh, make VM dev. It will build me the QMU. And this is basically on this diagram. Uh, we have local development Nix, which is uh, configuring the machine Nix. And this is this file. So uh, if I need, I have some debug flag that I'm taking from the environment. And then I configure uh, the machine. And as you see, there is not uh, much, few options, and then we are good. Mm. So here is basically the deployment on production. Uh, it's almost the same. It used the same four options. Uh, and production is, uh, uh, is using NixOps. And this is how I import the module. Uh, as you see, I'm providing Nix path to, uh, to the project name. So I can kind of uh, use absolute path to import uh, the module. So I have exactly the same machine Nix description on local development and on production. Uh, the one cool part that I could achieve with, uh, with this description was generated uh, credentials. Almost all credentials to uh, I think all credentials that are not for external services are auto-generated on the machine, so I really don't care uh, by moving th the same description or uh, or credentials from one place to another. Uh, each time the machine boots up, the credentials are regenerated and services are restarted, so this is pretty cool. Of course, it doesn't scale. Uh, it works well so far. We didn't have any uh, crap on production. And it's still slow to iterate. Uh, at some point, it, start, uh, it started to be pain. Uh, and this is how the machine uh, description looks like. Uh, there's some, uh, uh, let's say, global configuration options. So probably the most important are three first, right, uh, to enable like crazy stuff. Uh, here is the configuration of. Uh, this is the same file, um, machine Nix description. This is, uh, if I want local development, this is how I configure it. Uh, I have uh, a bunch of crap that uh, can help me with local development and make lives easier, which is opening the firewall, changing the password of the root, and this kind of crap. Mm, this is how I generate credentials on the machine. Uh, it's pretty fun, but it works. Uh, Mm. This is how I configure credentials also in Nix module. I never pass the credentials. I think we had some discussion over uh, GitHub. Uh, we are slowly changing, I think, 
some of the packages to this model as well, so we don't pass a uh, password which will uh, land in uh, Nick store. Here's the same for Django module. And, and this is the tool that helps me with uh, local development. Uh, which is PG Web. It's basically a front end for Postgres. So yeah. So what do we have here? Uh, Python building is pretty fast. Uh, nothing magic. Uh, copying the files. Styles I'm building with uh, SCSS, uh, which takes like 10 seconds. But I don't change that very often. I have pretty. Uh, it's pretty stable. Uh, to minimize the build time at the beginning, I really wanted to avoid Webpack. Uh, anybody has any uh, relation to Webpack? Build any web package? Yeah. I really want to avoid this uh, as much as I could. So I just linked Vue.js into the project and tried to not compile anything, just put the pure JavaScript there and leave it with, uh, which gave me the time 10 seconds for the local build and deployment. And this is basically the iteration time, which was quite fine for me for, lo for a long time. A uh, few lessons I, I learned from, uh, from building this, uh, this machine Nix stuff. Uh, at the beginning, I have put uh, this development environment switch into different modules, and I was passing this flag down, and this was really terrible to maintain in the long term. So at the beginning when I was writing it, it was really great. Uh, I remembered when everything is, so it was cool. But after two months, uh, I started forgetting that I have to enable this flag there and there and there. So uh, I really rec recommend to switching to the simpler model, which you have your packages uh, at the top, and you are configuring development tools also at the top level. So if you consider this one, uh, what, I'm, what I was talking about is like, for example, Postgres SQL init or Postgres SQL, where half gray, half yellow, right? And what I simplified was removing uh, those def from the uh, packages itself, from the modules itself, and basically put any configuration at the top level I if possible. So. As we can see, those are my commands. Uh, there is few uh, called local ones. Uh, they were added uh, later because React came. Uh, Vue.js is was not that great for me at the end. Mm. I think React is a little more flexible, so I started uh, doing a little uh, React as well. And then I had to do uh, Webpack, yeah. Uh, and also, the iteration time for Webpack is not that um, not that fast. Like 10 seconds is not fast, but with Webpack is even uh, a lot worse. Um, especially because I use uh, I try to use TypeScript there, and this basically uh, takes time to compile, uh, especially if you misconfigure it like me. So uh, yeah, it was maybe 30 or 40 seconds to do the iteration. So then I thought, okay. Uh, let's try to maybe uh, break a rule, or at least modify it. We know that requirements change, like this uh, stuff. It's always changed. It's always in move. So we have to just live with it. Uh, so series engineering ahead. We need to do apply some some stuff. So let's put some services outside. A lot of those tools already have like. Uh, development servers for you, right? Probably you know it. Uh, Django has its own server which does a reload. Uh, Webpack does a reload, hot reload. So, uh, so yeah, we are moving stuff outside. So we have Django, we have Webpack. Uh, PyTest is a little strange because it's not a service. Potentially, it can have a watcher. But uh, let's address it later. So if we put out, of course, our services outside, we need to have uh, addresses for the VM and stuff, and also credentials to the databases which are inside the VM. So for front end, we don't need that. So it's only like uh, 
run the server, webpack, uh, hot reload server, and that's it, which is that. And for uh, PyTest or Django, I, I have this small script, uh, fetch details, which basically goes, uh, cut all the run keys uh, environments. So I have them locally outside of the VM, and then I can use them to run the test or run the Django. Yeah, that's, uh, that's how it looks like. I just SSH into the machine. Uh, that's basically line 15. Uh, you just SSH to the machine, uh, get the IP address, and uh, dump all the uh, credentials. OK, so we have Django running with um, local Nix. Uh, let's call it shell. It's not exactly shell, but uh, Nix environment locally. We have React uh, working. Uh, as I said, tests has no uh, no need for server, but it could be it could be faster. Like each time I run the tests, uh, I, I thought, okay, I, if I have uh, reload for Django, if I have reload for Webpack, they are pretty fast, uh, much faster than 10 seconds. And now the tests are slowing part, so I thought, okay, let's optimize that one. So uh, the original uh, Nix build for tests is like. Uh, two minutes, something. And then each time I just want to enter to the environment, it's almost two seconds. Uh, of course, if you compare 10 seconds to two seconds, it's a lot better, but I was still like, maybe we can make it faster. Oh, and there is also fetch credentials from the VM part, uh, which is SSHing into the VM and getting stuff, which is another five seconds. So. Uh, I optimized, of course, fetch creds from the VM. I'm not sure if I had that here. Yeah, probably uh, in line seven, I have stats when I compare. If, if I did this in less than 10 minutes, uh, I just cache it into the file and not fetching it anymore. So I wanted to do something like that with the uh, Nix environment. So I created a small bash script, uh, and it works pretty well. It went from two or whatever seconds to like almost instant. And what what it does is uh, it does Nix shell on specific. Uh, uh, in my case, I think all the files are called default Nix. So it 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 does Nix shell. So building all the environment for you. And basically, as you see, I run export, which is exporting all the all all the environments from the shell, and I'm caching that into the file. Uh, the crap is that if anything changes uh, in dependencies of, of that uh, default Nix, you wouldn't rebuild that. So that's kind of crap, and you have to remember that. Uh, or in my case, I just uh, cache it for 10 minutes. Uh, so if I iterate fast, it's really fast. Uh, and if I break something, I don't have to remember if I broke something. Uh, after 10 minutes, it will rebuild anyway. Mm. I also started mobile application for that. I use React Native. At the beginning, I spent a lot of time trying to figure out the Nix ecosystem for, uh, for that one. I think uh, there is one person, which I forgot the name, which built quite a good uh, ecosystem around that. But I couldn't make it working with uh, that specific React version. Uh, I spent a few days and then uh, gave up. So what I did instead is, uh, because React Native has also hot reload and you can develop your application uh, in kind of a fast manner, um, I just try to make it reproducible. Uh, I couldn't make it working on pure Nix uh, environment. I don't know why. Uh, I spent like two days and gave up and said, okay, let's use Docker for uh, for this part. And what I did, I just overwrite uh, their internal tool inside the directory to start my uh, React uh, native server inside the Docker, which is this. So if I run React native, it runs Gradle W, and then it builds uh, stuff in Docker, mounts local directories, so there is a code included and stuff. And I think that would be that would be it. Thank you.
Hi. Uh, where do you pin Python packages? Sorry? Where do you pin Python packages? You mentioned that you're using Django. You know, you have Python libraries requirements. Oh, okay. Mm. So I use PyPI Tunix. Uh, sorry, th is that what I'm, you, what you're asking so, me? Yeah, so you're probably using, I don't know, like requests or other libraries in yeah. Django. You, you need to, pro I mean, you probably need to specify which version or do you just import lasers version? Sure, sure. So I'm not using uh, Nix packages uh, for, for uh, local libraries or local, um, for building the product. Uh, I try to specify as much as I can on my side, which is uh, both for uh, Vue.js project, for React project, and for Python. I use uh, my definition of packages, all of them. And of course, I use the tools that are generating that. For Python, you use uh, PyPI2 Nix. Did you know that? OK. And for, uh, for JavaScript, I use uh, what it was, Node to Nix, I think which generate me uh, all the package descriptions, and then I import that, and I, do, I, I just do make derivation. I, I don't build a pure Python package. Any more questions? Don't be shy. Thank you. <laughs>